Well, I want to say Happy New Year and really appreciate Trevor Harris finding the time to join us here today. Been thinking of him a lot. And I will say Happy New Year, Trevor. We can get him on the screen. Do we have him? There we yep. go. Hey, Trevor. Uh, listen, man, I'm going to jump right to it. Yeah, good to see you. I was thinking of you when the release from the Alouettes came the week of Christmas. And I was angry, actually, that it happened at Christmas. And then CFL people were like, no, 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 Rod, maybe Trevor wanted it. You never know with these things. Um, so I guess as you enter the New Year's of free agent, how, you know, with how things have gone down, how you doing and where you going? Oh man, I'm out, doing outstanding. And yeah, it was a mutual thing. Uh, it was, we they, we discussed it, and um, they kind of just told me they'd love to have me back, and uh, it just may not be in the capacity that that I was hoping. And so they just asked how I wanted to kind of go about it. And they were tremendous people. I I couldn't say more great things about uh, the Alouette organization and Danny Machocha and Kari Jones and that locker room. And um, shoot, I had a great time there, and those are great people. They they treated me right. Good, good. Well, Trevor, it, I mean, you've got the all-star status, CFL, Players Association, first team all-star, but it seems like nothing ever comes easy for you. And I think the 2021 season must have been your most trying in pro football, just watching from the outside. Am I right or have I read that wrong? No, you're right. Um, but at the same time, I think, I think a lot of times that we go through things, I think that's when we learn the most. And I think that's, that's an opportunity to, to grow. And uh, when this year happened, uh, you know, you just kind of take things in stride and it's fluid. Uh, that's the game of life. Things aren't always going to go your way. Uh, you may, you may have some disgruntled callers and don't like the things that you say. And, uh, that's just how things go. But, but when you make mistakes in uh, in life and, and things don't go the way you want either, or, uh, that's an opportunity to grow. And there's, there's, there's just a part of me that always is wanting to learn and grow in terms of who I'm going to be as a coach someday. And when things happen, um, you can a lot, of, a lot of times learn how to not handle situations, and uh, this year was one of those things. And so uh, I'm, I'm just thankful for the things that I did get to go through this year. Good for you. Well, there's a, you sound a lot like Tom Brady, by the way. And the thing, I'm in the middle of man in the arena, so you're saying a lot of things like Tom says, and uh, he's always come out smiling on the other side too. Listen, I'll look ahead in a minute, but I just want to look back. You were on the field playing real fast in Montreal, Frank. What did you been there a week? Like, how did that work out that you got on? The, did you get on the field sooner than you thought you would? Yeah, I didn't anticipate that happening. Um, and when I shoot, when I look back, I don't think I played bad football this year. I, you know, shoot, when I got hurt, uh, when I hurt my neck against Calgary, um, I think uh, numbers wise, you know, I was up there with anybody else in the league. And then unfortunately, I got hurt, came back and played a poor game and uh, they moved on. And I've always prided myself on being a quick study, but for me to take credit for that would be, would be arrogant or to be selfish and, and really downright stupid. Um, there was, I had a lot of help there. Uh, the coach, Mike Leonello, uh, Kahari was tremendous in terms of, you know, floating me in, in the right way and giving me enough that I could handle. And, uh, I just tried to work out as hard as I could. And I do a lot of brain training in the off seasons, work with neuroplasticians and I have a, a mental performance coach as well. And, so using a lot of the tools in my toolbox to try to learn as fast as I could. And uh, I just was able to go out there and just trust my instincts of play ball. And most importantly, uh, the game of football was fun again. And, and that, that, made it, that made it pretty awesome for me. Well, you were putting up some really good numbers too. And it was a very good team you lost out to in the playoffs. Let's be honest. But So I will say this, as we sit here in mid-January, you seem very chipper for a guy that currently doesn't have a team unless you have some news for us today what's the outlook for 2022 when i do have some news to break i'll i'll uh, i'll shoot clark a text and see if you can get me back on <laughs> um okay. but uh no nothing nothing right now we're down to a few teams and uh you know we chat we've chat with a few teams here and there i've talked to my agent a few times but we really wanted to kind of let the dust settle and you know let gms uh get hired let coaches staffs uh you know let the dust settle on those sorts of things and uh, people to get through the holidays and transitions and stuff, and um, we'll hone in on it and, uh, and figure things out. But uh, as of right now, I'm I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I'm a I'm a God fearing man, and I know that God's going to open the right door at the right time, and uh, it'll be obvious. And whatever that is, I just want to be you know faithful and willing to step through whatever it is that uh, that God wants me to. And uh, yeah, I, until then, I'm just going to be excited. I'm going to keep training. Uh, I got a good group of guys we're training with this off season here in Columbus, and um, I couldn't be more excited because. Truthfully, I know a lot of people say this, uh, and I think, frankly, most of the time it's just a bunch of crap, but I truly, deep in my heart, uh, believe my best football is right in front of me. 
I think my best four or five years, uh, God willing, are, are directly in front of me. And so I'm excited about it. Absolutely. And I love your attitude. And this has all been a training ground, as you know, for where you are right now. And you're a very valuable commodity because you got a lot of starts under your belt. And you've done a lot of you've done a lot of thinking and, or um, you've done a lot of winning. I want to ask you, though, without asking who the teams are, would you consider a return to a past market you've been in? Because you've, you've been around. You, you would? Yeah. yeah. So are you excited about these possibilities? I am. I am. Because to be honest with you, Rod, I, I truly feel that I'm a, I'm a tier one guy. And um, But who doesn't believe that, that they're a starter? If you don't believe that, you've got to have a little bit of that to you if you want to be a franchise quarterback. And um, and I believe that. And so I think that, you know, if I can get to a team and uh, put ourselves in a good situation, I think that we can put together a nice season. And um, I'll be really excited about it uh, when I'm able to to know where I'm going and uh, and who I'll be playing under. But um, until then, I'm just going to keep grinding. And uh, when I'm done playing, when I grow up someday, I want to be like you and uh, have my own sports talk radio show or, or debate sports <laughs> with people. Well, you'd be fantastic at it, but you got a lot of playing to do. And I'm, and I'm with you on that thing that the right opportunity will present itself and things always work out the way they're supposed to. And, uh, but like I said, I just don't see that you have a lot of detractors. You probably feel that you do, but, there's a lot of Trevor Harris fans across this country that are just eagerly watching this situation and seeing where you land. And uh, what is your day to day like now in terms of training? Who you you mentioned the mental side of things, physical training. Uh, what are you doing there? Um, I, I do a lot of TB12 method stuff. Uh, I, I follow a lot. I go and train with uh, Tom Brady's crew, kind of out uh, for a week every off season. I kind of learned quite a bit there. A lot of the pliability training, uh, spend 20, 25 minutes before my workout, working that 20, 25 minutes after. And uh, it's a lot of mobility training because I think that's when people start to age is when they lose mobility. And I feel like my mobility has continued to get better and better. I feel younger and younger every year, which, again, I know a lot of people say that. Uh, and it's a lot of talk about it. But uh, I truly feel that way. And, um, yeah, I couldn't be more excited about it. But. Uh, I'm going to be training at KSM here in uh, in Columbus with a good group of guys, Kenny Stafford, BJ Cunningham, and a couple other guys in the CFL. So uh, we're going to be getting after it, doing a lot of speed training, uh, a lot of agility, lower upper body focus stuff. But uh, my focus will remain on the pliability and mobility type stuff because that's where really where I feel like uh, you can really uh, you know prolong your career, stay young, and recover better. But I will say there's no better performance enhancer out there than sleep and then getting in eight hours of sleep. And uh, that's something I've learned quite a bit about, just like the science of sleep and what that's all about. So sleep, hydration, and, uh, and toying with my diet here and there, those are the things that I think will be able to prolong anybody's life career, uh, help yourself feel, feel good, your myology will be better. And um, yeah, so I'm really just focused on the, those sort of details and then growing through uh, my mental side as well. Uh, Trevor, I was sensing the Tom Brady thing. I didn't know you were doing TB12 stuff. See how, see how it works. Um, and I, <laughs> hey, right. And I just got to say, lastly, are you still on team tackle radar? And I support what your guys do in Drew Green and Adam Big Hill. You're still doing the tackle radar thing. And if so, what would you like our viewers to know about it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I worked with tackle radar this year and it's something that I was ignorant of and I didn't know anything about that. Uh, tackle radon is about radon gas and how it's the second leading cause of uh, lung cancer, especially in the prairies up there in Canada. And, um, you know, I have some friends that have gotten lung cancer that have never smoked a cigarette in their life. And they and they kind of wonder why. And I've always wondered why as well, frankly. And, uh, you know, this probably causes an, uh, an answer for that. And so when I just moved into my new house, when I came back home, I actually had my radon test uh, going right now. And it's test for about three months. And then once we figure out which the uh, rate on gas level is, we'll treat that through uh, the company. And uh, yeah, and just thankful to be a part of that. And so if you don't have your home tested, um, you're really at risk because it's colorless, odorless, and no, you don't even really know what's going on. And uh, it's like I said, it's second leading cause of lung cancer and a uh, great cause that I'm, I'm thankful to be a part of. It's season three. Go to tackleradon.ca. You can order your test kit right there. Register for the online auction. Trevor, following everything you're doing, supporting it all, good luck. I appreciate the time. Uh, here, all the best in 2022. Appreciate you, RP. And one of these days, I got to get some gear, man. How about that? <laughs> oh, Absolutely. You know where to find me. Trevor Harris right, uh, joining us at CFL. Yeah.
quarterback. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of The Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.